Hey guys, what if I told you there was this really cool World War II museum in Valencia just outside of Dumaguete in the Philippines? Should we go? Hey, 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 Vern! Hey! So for those that, that know me, that really know me, I've been metal detecting since 1980, since I was a kid. And this has been one of my favorite pastimes. I've been neglecting this hobby for probably about three, four years now, but when I'm into it, I'm really into it. So uh, I found a really special find in a park called Carlton Park in Oregon, and I think it was about 10 years ago. And I'm swinging my metal detector, and I hear this beep, 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 beep. And the metal detector read 50 cent piece, and I thought, no, I've been here before. There's no 50 cent piece. And it was in a newly dug area where they were digging for a playground set. And so I dug down and up pops this ring, this sterling silver ring. Now what's really cool about this ring is it's kind of special. On the inside, it's dated with the inscription 1916, made from an English, I believe it's a florin 50 cent piece. And on the outside, somebody inscribed USA, USS Arkie, A-R-K-I-E, 17 slash 18 slash 19. <clears throat> so this person who made this ring was a sailor aboard the battleship Arkansas during World War I. And oftentimes when sailors are on board, they will take a coin and they will tap it until the sides flare out. Then they will drill a hole through the center and then they will inscribe whatever they need on the outside. And oftentimes the coin inscription date, whatever, will remain on the inside edges. And so this ring was lost in a park, brought back after World War I, and who knows? Maybe it was lost right after the war. Maybe it was lost in the 40s. Nobody knows, but I'm going to give this to the World War II Museum. I think it's, it's sat in my drawer long enough and it needs a special home, so let's go to the museum. Let's, let's give this a proper home, shall we? Alright guys, I'm going to try to record this ring. It's really hard to record, so let's say it says USA US S Arky Read it, Arky 17 Slash 18, slash 19, USA. I don't think you can read the inscription on the inside edge, but it's in there. All right. Hey guys, today we're at the Valencia World War II Museum and we are here with the owner, Felix Cataal, and this is his museum. Hello, Felix. Hello. Nice to see uh, you again. Good morning. Thank you. So, Felix, before I get started looking at mu your museum, I want to give you this ring yes. that I found in a park in Carlton at least 10 years or more ago. And it was made by a sailor aboard the USS Arkansas dated uh, 17, 18, and 19, and so he would have been on the battleship during World War I. Have you ever seen anything like that? Not yet. Thank you. You're very welcome. And so, out of all the things that I've found metal detecting since 1980, yes. this one for me is kind of the most special thing that I've found, and so I'm glad that it'll finally get a place to be seen instead of sitting in my drawer. <laughs> now, I wrote a couple things just so you could have that information yes. about it. Now, I have a friend, her name is uh, Tonico Martinez. Yes. And Tonico Martinez is half Japanese, half Filipino. And after I had taken my video um, of the, the shrine, she wrote me and said, my grandfather was a Japanese. He was a young man who went island hopping with his cousin with a certain merchant's boat from Okinawa, Japan, going to the islands of the Philippines years before the war. He arrived to Visayas region where he met my Filipino grandmother 
in Negros Island in Gahooligan and married her. They had five kids. They moved to Dumaguete and built his business, a bicycle shop. Then war started and he was used by Japanese as translator because he was very fluent in Visaya. So he was separated from his family to help the Japanese military. He asked a family friend to help his family escape and hide at Mount Talinas to keep them safe. They were safe and most of them survived except for my grandma's dad who died from bomb wounds. My uncle survived from malaria too. After the Japanese lost the war, my grandfather was deported back to Japan and unfortunately was separated from his family for good. My grandfather saved a lot of Filipino who were to be executed by Japanese officials. He was often seen standing between the Japanese guns to prevent local Filipinos from being killed. He would tell the Japanese they can call him and even his whole family if they won't believe that these men were good people. He was very known by the locals in Gahooligan and he knows most of the people too from all the years of doing business with the locals. So he knew that they were not enemies, but just Filipino civilians. Yes. So what do you know about this and do you have a connection to this man? This man, the son of this man, Ugawa, saved my father from being executed and he was just taken by the Japanese as a prisoner. Wow. Wow. So my father was gathering food supplies for the guerrillas when he was eating the breakfast that a girl running with a baby was shouting, the Japanese are coming. So my father did not mind it, so he just continued eating. When he finished eating, he went down and tried to escape. But the Japanese was already encircling the house wow. that had been eating. So he returned back to the house, went under the, the house, and dig onto the ground and buried his gun there. Oh, wow. Then the house where he was gathering the food was uh, from Mr. Nazarino. So Mr. Nazarino was a teacher from Seliman. Hmm. And the uniform for the teachers were the brown. So when the Japanese arrived, he was still wearing the brown short pants and the brown polo. Okay. So the Japanese soldiers were the first to arrive. Then one of the soldiers tortured my father oh boy. because he said, you are guerrilla. Wow. So he was butt stroke. Uh, a lot of things done to him by that single soldier. Wow. Then the officers then arrived and the son of Ugawa was a lieutenant of the Japanese Imperial Army. Mm. And they know each other since before the war because the bicycle shop selling the pilot bicycles Selling the pilot bicycles? Yes, the pilot brand bicycles. Okay. My father, every weekend, goes to the Maghetti, riding on his bike, and look at the new models of bicycles coming ah, from Japan. Wow, okay. Then... Because he was a bicycle shop owner, right? It was, yes, he was a bicycle shop owner, and mm. new, new types of bicycles are on display, and my father always liked to look at all right. the display. My father and the son of Okawa were not introduced, so they just know their faces. Wow. And when he was captured, the son recognized my father, mm. but he does not know the name. Oh my. So, all of the soldiers stood at attention. Then, the officer 
ask the soldiers, why are you doing this? He is my friend. Mm. We do not know each other, but he is my friend. Mm. Then, because the officer had seen the one torturing my father from afar. Oh, wow. So all the soldiers there were ordered by the officer to slap the soldier once. All of them, 30 of them, were slapping that soldier. Wow. Every time they slap, he bows. Oh my gosh. Yes. And then he became a prisoner of war. They were tied onto the neck with the ropes and on the on the waist. Waist. Wow. And there were lots of them. So my father was tasked to carry the Japanese radio. Oh wow. Then a carpenter when the house was made was his companion when they were captured. Ah. Yes, and they met when our house was made. Oh wow. What a small then world. that guy, the carpenter, the carpenter was the one tasked to climb up the trees, to climb up the coconuts, gather the coconuts because the Japanese were not feeding them, and to put the antenna on top of the trees or onto the coconuts. Oh wow, so they could get a radio signal. Yes, yes. Oh boy. So they crossed country from Tanhai until Santa Catalina. And they say we need six days to cross country going to Bayawan. But the scout where they are going to pass, because there is no road going there. Mm. They just tear bits and pieces of paper. So the ones following them can just pass by that area where the where the paper was. Paper oh was. boy. Hmm. That's it. When they arrived near Bayawan, the there was already smoke. The Japanese was already burning the town of oh Bayawan. My gosh. And so they diverted to Santa Catalina. Hmm. In Santa Catalina they When the Japanese arrived in Santa Catalina, all the people were escaping. Oh, I would imagine. Right? And it was already noon. Mm. And the vacated houses still had the food on the table. Oh, wow. So, so they were left in a panic. The, the one that put the antenna on top of the trees went to all the houses and gathered all the eggs because they were not fed. Sure, sure. They just drink the eggs and ate that was left on the table. Oh my gosh. And the Japanese was already burning the house. Uh, the houses. The doctor brings a plate and asks the soldiers one spoon to feed my father. Oh my gosh, that's all they were given? One spoon oh, per soldier. Oh wow! To feed my father, mm. they were already friends. Mm. And from Santa Catalina, they rode on launches. And on every village, every town, they machine gun the shore. They disembark and then burn all the houses. Oh, MacArthur was wow. already in Leyte. I didn't know that they were that destructive. They were that destructive. That was the only resource that they can do. And this are the exploded shell. That tail, oh. Oh. when it explodes, the extreme pressure blasts them just like the flowers. Oh wow. Just like this. Very deadly. That is only the tail for this. The high explosive shell. Jeez. And the Japanese also have the same like this. The only difference is that the detonator is made of brass. 
The American is made of plastic and the aluminum. Ah, I see. And the Japanese can choose to put it on instantaneous explosion or delayed. That when they were bombed onto the beach uh -huh. by the mortar barrage, uh -huh. the American soldier usually says when it sticks into the ground, they just think that it is a dud. Oh. Continue the advance, so they stand up. When they stand up, it explodes, oh. killing most of them. Oh my gosh. What is the delay on that? When it hits the ground, what's the time delay? How long till it goes? Four to five seconds. So it's very fast. That's very fast. Wow. So let me ask you this, Felix. And, and, and this, is, this has kind of been going through my brain. Yeah. So when you go to defuse these bombs, all these bombs are bombs that you pull apart yourself. Yeah. So how did that happen? Did you just say, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go dig up some big bombs today? And when you started doing this, you probably weren't out there with precision tools and listening to the bomb like they do in the movies, right? Uh, there was nothing except a field manual titled "Booby Traps" and where you find them. Okay. As we were waging a cabinet from my grandmother's house. It was my mother's room. As we removed the cabinet, I saw a field manual that was titled the uh, booby traps on where you find them. All the bombs there listed were German and Japanese. Mm. But they are all similar to all the bombs. Okay, so you took and, a risk. Yes, yeah. and I was looking at books, encyclopedias, dictionaries, everything. Mm -hmm. And I can see grenades there, the crosscut section that I put into my mind that everything man-made can be dismantled. Mm, right, right. Yes, yeah, so if I can find a new bomb that I had not yet opened, <laughs> I go to the faucet, let the water running, uh -huh. and I cut it open. Mm. I have to destroy one bomb, uh. so the next will be easy. So the sample. So how do you get big enough balls to just say, today we're going to open up a bomb. Hey, Felix, what are you doing today? I'm opening up a bomb. Can I call you back? I, I, I'm a little busy right now. <laughs> I mean, how do you prepare for that? Do you like, Mama, I'm, I might be coming home today. How, how does that... How does that work through your head when you're doing this? My uncle was the first to defuse the big bombs mm. and he was my teacher. Ah. So in doing the big bombs, I got instruction from him. Okay. That we make the sledgehammer. <laughs> The cold chisel Ooh. that you know to get the cap to turn the top of the bomb, like right here. This this cap yes, here. Yes. Okay. You start you to know where the, the thread top. goes. It is always <laughs> going, just like opening a faucet. Ah, uh, okay. What if it's a reverse thread? Counterclockwise. <laughs> but in my experience, I also have stumbled upon bombs that was. Reversed. Oh boy. The, 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 thread, the thread is on reverse. Mm. That after hammering, after chiseling, <laughs> that <laughs> the cover was already fun. It was loose. No longer tight. Mm -hmm. That I had to spray it with the WD-40 All right. to release. Then I turn to the other side, then it is open. Okay. <laughs> because there is no manual mm. telling me exactly how to open it. So have you ever had a moment where you hear a click and it scared the chicken adobo right out of you? Uh, the only explosion that happened in front of me was when I was cutting the 7.62 M1 Garand ammunition. Mm. I was cutting the rear portion with a primer. Okay. I was cutting it to make it as 
the washers because I'm going to put it into the chair of the Jeep with a wood screw and the washers you can read DEN 43 LC 42 FA 41 and the shiny shell I made it into washers mm. So it looks nice. Then nice. I had to make a lot. Okay. That there was a bullet. I turned lazy because a lot. You get tired of cutting a lot. Mm. <laughs> so I have seen that mm. it was already struck, and the tip was still there. Mm -hmm. I put it on a vise mm -hmm. with the tail and cut it with a hacksaw blade okay then the heat of the cutting sell off exploded oh i got blinded for oh my gosh more than one minute and when you're really blind all that you see even if you open up your eyes very wide mm. all that you can see is light flash darkness Oh, you do see total darkness, not like total a Total darkness. There's no light. Oh my gosh. And then wow. I thought to myself, I'm already blind. Blind. Ooh. You cannot see. Then my vision returned mm. after more than one minute. Oh, lucky. I have experienced to be blind for more than one minute. Mm. And that was enough. All right, Felix, tell me about this bomb. How big is this bomb? This is... 1,000 pounds or 454 kilograms. Wow. And how many of these do you think were dropped up here in Valencia when they were bombing the A lot, people here? because the P-38 Lightning, the double body was the one dropping this here. One underneath the fuselage and two on the wings. Oh, wow. The ones located on the wings were the 500 pound bomb, half the size of this. Okay. And this is underneath the fuse lads. Wow. So they had how many men up here do you think that they were dropping bombs onto when they were? There were about the Japanese that were here. 1,300 Japanese soldiers in the hills. Oh, there were that many up there? Yes. Wow. Wow. And the Peter Tate's pilots were dropping this for more than one month. Wow, that long? Because, yes, because a P-38 Lightning, two of it were shot down by the Japanese and the pilots bailed out. Ah. When they bailed out, they were captured by the Japanese. Okay. And they were beheaded. Oh my gosh. And their heads were paraded all over the city streets. Boy. so that the people can see that these are the heads of the pilot that we shut down. Wow, serious business. Jeez. Yes, the, the rest of the squadron of the P-38s decided to have a revenge against the Japanese, that they follow them wherever they go and drop these bombs oh, wow. for one month. Mm. So how did you get this home? This isn't just one of those things you put on your shoulder and carry home. How did you get this home? And did you say, you know what, I need that. I'm going to bring that home. I have to open it up, remove the TNT explosives inside. Mm -hmm. And the TNT that I remove is about 100 kilograms per bomb. Oof. And when this bomb is exploding and you're just standing five meters away from it, you're standing on ground zero, and nothing can be found of your body. Oh you're just gosh. vaporized. Oh, yeah, I would imagine that. This oh, is the scale model of the B-17 Flying Fortress. Okay. And this plane can carry eight of this. Oh boy. Yes. Mm. Okay. The the B-29, just like the Enola Gay, can carry fifty of this. Wow because 
the little boy atomic bomb was exactly 10,000 pounds and this is just 1,000 pounds you need 10 of this to make one atomic bomb okay three inches thick the thickness so is that like the the stem that probes into the rest of the bomb to ignite it the part that this screeches? is the detonator at the front and there is also a detonator at the back oh in case it lands from the, the wire meets at the center oh it does this is a detonator that failed to explode because the crew forgot to remove the safety bolt ah. oh. and oh wow the firing pin is still stuck up right there ah because the bolt is holding it but if you have to remove that bolt then when the bomb hits the ground ah, I the see. inertia just I boom see. so who was the lucky guy that got to unscrew that baby <laughs> when you were Me. pulling this thing apart now did you have any idea what to expect when you were unscrewing one of these caps yes so you did from and was it from the other bombs that you had the experience from the other bomb ah okay because i think i would be a little leery when and I saw uh, that. it has been struck ah so that's the that's the the cap that they'll start the whole thing going wow yeah. wow you know what the crazy thing is is everything here was designed to kill people yes you know and and it's amazing that is man's inhumanity to man right and it's amazing how well that they've been able to design that it's just amazing this is the detonator for this bomb so it's very similar to the front detonator yeah. and this was they had removed the bolt, but so they set it up right. I see how when it hits the ground, is. inertia strikes. Right, strikes the cap and blows it up. Wow, it's very sensitive. That's the firing pin. Wow, and that's the detonator. Wow, hmm. but. It, it had struck. So both had struck. It was a dud. And it was... I found this with a plug at the front. The detonator was not attached at the front. So oh, wow. when the other one at the rear is a dud, mm. no chance of exploding. It was a dud. Okay. Wow. So they were, this was a Friday made bomb, right? They decided that, oh, guess what? We're in a hurry, let's just put this together. Wow, that's scary either way, either way. So Felix, you have a lot of smaller bombs right above you. What, what's up with those that bombs? That is the light shells for the 81 millimeter mortar. You can see that there are holes on the walls because that is already thin skin and on top of it are the japanese airplane bombs that when you look closely at the bombs uh -huh. you can see the rings right that the number two bomb the rings i removed on this earth oh these are the rings here the rings from the number two bomb wow Got only it. the first is shredded the rest is just being pushed inside huh. It's just a simple ring. Now, is this made of a special metal or just a regular steel? Or maybe. High-strength high steel, maybe? Yeah. It doesn't seem very complicated, but sure as hell is deadly because you think all these would fragment into pieces. Yes, and you look at the front. The front, when you pull out the pin and you drop it, it is a propeller that it is just blown by the wind. What's to the arm itself. Oh, really? Yes. That's the arming device. The, the moving of the... Huh. The inertia of falling and the air pressure hitting it uh -huh. removes the safety cap. Wow. And when it hits the ground, it explodes. So Boom. was there a high level of these that were duds? Because you seem to have quite a few of them. 
the Japanese most of their airplanes lack spare parts that they were removing the fuel tanks to be used as drinking water containers oh my gosh and they had lots of this that they were already very disadvantaged that they lacked the firepower that they had to carry this into the mountain bring the ropes tie them on top of the trees remove the safety caps ah. and when the americans are on the shade they're shooting the rope so it will fall on them killing all of ah. them underneath the shade ah. Crazy. So Felix, what's the story with this gun here, this big... This, this was the standard Japanese 7.7mm .7 machine gun. It can fire 450 rounds per minute. So you divide it by 60 seconds and 7 shots are coming at you per second. Wow. That's I wild. found this on top of a hill looking down where the enemy was coming wow. but the japanese soldiers just left this behind because they were already weak starving but they surrendered without bringing their gun right they just left it there so felix one of the questions that uh one of my viewers had asked is uh what made you start this? How did this begin? Why did you just... My only uncle, the brother of my mother, graduated in the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, March 1941. And when they were about to go home, the Americans stopped them from coming home and they were immediately trained as soldiers. Wow. And he ended up in the Philippine Scouts Artillery Battalion. Mm -hmm. And MacArthur was waiting. The Americans was expecting the Japanese to come by April. Oh, no kidding. But the Japanese started coming by December. Oh, wow. Very early. So my uncle fought in Bataan. And... The Filipinos' way of thinking is never surrender, but they have to follow the orders of the Americans to surrender because if you are a deserter, the punishment is death by musketry by the firing squad. Wow, serious business. So they have to follow the orders of the Americans. Mm. They were from Marabelis, Bataan until Kapas Tarlac, that's more than 100 kilometers. They were marched in columns of six. Hmm. But for the artillery battalion, because they killed a lot of Japanese, their shots were all accurate. The, the Japanese, for every 10 of them, one Japanese guard. But for the rest of the United States Armed Forces in the Far East, one guard for 100 of them. They were the best. Wow. The, the Japanese killed all of them. They only stopped killing the Japanese when there was no more ordnance to load artillery. Because in the beginning of the war, there was no reinforcement or resupply. Oh, right, right. They had nothing. Run out of so they were calling themselves as the fighting bastards of Bataan. Hmm. You know why they were calling themselves that way? No, why? Because they have no mama, no papa, and no Uncle Sam. Hmm. Nah, nobody helped them. Wow. They were on their own. They were on their own. Wow. When did you start digging for things? How did that happen? Did you, did you move to Valencia to come to dig, or were you always living in this area? They, former school building at the central school in front of the plaza was where the Japanese garrison was. Okay. There were 15 Japanese soldiers assigned here. And when you pass by the sentry, you have to bow to them. Oh, no kidding. The, they had areas that is 
Japanese territory and beyond that area is the guerrilla territory. Mm. Now, when the guerrillas will attack them, they usually crawl along the canals to have a surprise attack. You do not march going to attack. They can see you and they can prepare. Mm. So, when they crawl, when they are in front of the school building, they fire everything, then after firing, they retreat back to the hills because the Magetti is just 15 minutes away and the reinforcements are coming. Oh, sure, sure. So, at, before I was five years old, I was always at the canals. Because at the canal, I find a lot of marbles that were lost by boys playing oh, yeah, yeah. the marbles. Mm -hmm. And I find box magazine of the Carbin M1. Oh, wow. The clips of the M1 Garand. The shells and the rotten helmets oh, still, no, still left behind. Wow. So every heavy downpour, as the rocks and the sand tumbles, mm -hmm. I jump again, always losing my slippers in that action because the rocks under the canal are slippery, so I am walking barefoot. Okay. And picks up anything sticking on top of the ground. After the heavy downpour, when the water is already gone, the canals were still very clean during the time. Mm. So I am just sleeping on the sand and the rocks. Picking up the things. There. So, what year was this? Was this in the 60s? It was in 19... 1964. So it had been it had been uh, lost for 20 years. Yes, I was born 14 years after the war. Okay. And and 19 years after the war, I started picking up the things. Mm. Nobody took care of them. The people who gathers them, mm. the brass shells, the metal, mm. they're selling them for scrap. Oh, I would imagine. Mine, I kept. Okay. So... And it's good you did. Wherever you go, nothing like this. Right. Because... This unique, very unique. The Lonely Planet Men, I am already listed there for about 18 years. Mm. They say there are only two of us doing this in the whole world. I am the only one in the Philippines. Oh my gosh. And the other one is located in Saipan. Mm. Well, that's great that you did that. Because this is not just an ordinary museum. A lot of Japanese are calling this as a shrine. Wow because I still had Japanese remains. I have turned over already to Japan 32 Japanese soldiers remains. That you dug up? Yes, personally. that because after the war, the Japanese had just forgotten their fallen for 30 years. Mm. Then in the 70s, we have a friendship treaty with Japan. Mm -hmm. And they started coming to get their fallen. Oh, wow. They started in 1973, mm -hmm. and they ended up in 1983, after 10 years, because every time they come during summertime, they get lesser and lesser remains, because 30 years after the war, it's very hard to find them. Mm. Lots of overgrowth. All oh, right. Lots of crash. And if they died on the open field, never find the them. wild animals will just scatter the remains. Oh, and the right. type of farming here mm. was the slash and the burn. Mm. When the forests are burned, their remains are cremated immediately. Oh, I see. Okay. The, when they ultimately stopped in 1983, I felt it as my mission that whenever I find a Japanese remain, mm. I bring them home. Mm. That's great. And in three years' time, I found 
the first 17 Japanese soldiers remained. Wow. So you still have some caskets here, right? Yes, I still had seven, six Japanese and one American, but the American is not yet identified. Mm. Because when I unearthed him, he was buried naked without any identification. Oh, okay, okay. And I found an American dog tag with the name of Eugene Joseph Parichao, private. Mm. Came from Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And he died June 7, 1945. Okay. His comrades went to his side to ascertain if he was really truly dead. Okay. They, know, they have seen that he was already dead. Then a Japanese grenade blasted near them and another soldier was wounded. Mm -hmm. So they cannot get the body because of the heavy mortar, artillery, and machine gun fire. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So the Americans was bombing that hill for five days. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the Americans took that hill from the Japanese hands in June 12, 1945. Mm -hmm. When they took that hill, they were looking for his body, but they cannot find it. And that's where the shrine is now, right? That is Kwan, about nine hours from the shrine. So the soldiers that you've dug up, yes, you still have them? Yes. Some that are still here. And why? I why? still had six. Okay. Because 30 years after I took it as my mission to bring home what I find. Okay. And in three years time, I found the first 17 of them. Mm. And the Japanese started to come and took it. Mm. So I gave it to the Sotomo Lions Club. Then 1986, October 24, 1986. Then the second batch was on in 1995 with seven okay. uh, by the Ministry of Health and Welfare. And the third batch was in 1999 with eight. 23 March, 1999. Okay. And can I read it in the video? Sure. Yes. The Ministry of Health and Welfare, Kasumi Gasiki, one does two does two. Chiyudaku, Tokyo. One hundred does eight zero four five. Twenty three March nineteen ninety nine. Dear Mr. Kataal, we thank you very much for your help during our stay in Negros Oriental. We were deeply impressed with your consideration of our project collection of the remains of the war dead abroad more than 500,000 Japanese people lost their lives in the Philippines there are many bereaved families in Japan who still strongly believe that the government should take all the responsibilities to bring the remains back to Japan. The belief is the important reason why we continue the project for more than 50 years. We try to identify the remains in the hope that we return them to their families. Right, right. On the other hand, the unidentified are stored in Chidori Gafuchi Cemetery of the war dead near the imperial palace and carefully maintained by the government. Mm. Approximately 1,100,000 Philippine people, we understand, died or injured in World War II. 
I am afraid I am not officially in a position to comment on all the troubles caused to you in the past. However, I sincerely hope that our mission will create new friendly relationships mm. between the Philippines and Japan. Nice. I would be grateful if you could advise us or our Embassy of Japan of information about the remains of the Japanese soldiers. Personally, I think that the project will continue as long as information is provided and the very families wish is last. Mm. Thank you again for your hospitality and understanding of our project. We will never forget that you treat the spirit of the war dead with all care and respect. Mm. Please give our best regards to Mrs. Katal. We wish you good health. Your sincerely, Kasushi Yamagishi, nice. leader of the Japanese government mission. Mm. That's wonderful. Thank you. So, what would somebody want to do if they wanted to try to help to bring the rest of the Japanese home? Is there the, is it a money issue? What what is holding the that? Japanese government ultimately stopped gathering the remains in the year two thousand? Okay, they officially stop it altogether. Mm. So those that are left behind, they are already totally forgotten. Wow. So there's still families that don't know. There are still families that come here, visit me, mm. and tell me their son died here, mm. their uncle died here, wow. their fathers died here. Mm. The, these families, so that they can have a grave for their mm. lost, the fallen, right, and their municipality or in their towns, usually get soil from here, mm. even if there's no remain. Oh wow! Just to bury it oh, in boy. Japan. Okay. Wow. As a reminder that they died in this island. Okay. They just bring. They just bring with them plastic boxes, put it, mm. put the soil in it, oh, and wow. they have a grave, they bury the soil mm. in it. So if, if somebody saw this video and wanted to help get the war dead is back to Japan, is it just a money issue to transport the coffins? Is uh, that what it is? Or the what? government is the one sending the Ministry of Health and Welfare. Okay that they also contacted the governor, mm. the other government officials, and they gave us a party, mm. we drink, we eat. Mm. And all of them are pouring the beer on my glass. They want me to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're probably very grateful for what yes, you've done. Very grateful. Mm. The, the leader of the government mission said to me, our temples are in our hearts. Mm. We cannot forget you for what you have done to us. Nice. So I'm just thinking, uh, if, if people had seen this video, is there anything they can do to help to get the rest of the people back? Do they have to, to contact the ministry and petition them to try to get things moving forward? There is a group in Japan that is contacting families. Okay. There, until today. Mm. But, you know, the expense of coming here right. and sending, bringing something back mm. to Japan. So do you have the names of the, the soldiers that you're looking there for? There are families? no names left behind. I have the dog tags that they call as the their name plates. Okay. But what is written there are only numbers. Oh. But if you can read a name, that's an officer. Hmm. But for numbers only 
they are just a common soldier. So they'd have to look it up in their registry. And there is no more records left behind in Japan. It was all burned out oh, no. by the war. Oh boy. Tokyo was burned to the ground. Wow. <laughs> and they kept all the records there. Okay. All right, so let's just pan through here really quick. Kind of give you an idea what the museum looks like. He's fixed it up really nice. All right, so your heart is into the swords. Very, very cool. So this is the Wakisashi. And, and what does that mean? Self-disembowelment. Self-disembowelment, that doesn't yes. sound very nice. In ivory. So was that because something found here? To preserve their honor. Uh -huh. They have to kill themselves. Oh my gosh. Wow. They do not want to go home defeated. Oh, right, right, right. So they have to kill themselves Ugh. to preserve the family's honor. Mm. Wow, pretty serious business. And this sword here is a saber from the Russo Japanese War. Hmm. that the Japanese won in 1905. Wow. The next blade is the Imperial Japanese Army Katana. Hmm. This is the Imperial Marines Katana and this is the Imperial Japanese Navy Katana wow. made of Taisabiko and Sabinaito steel. In English, it is stainless steel. Ah, I was going to say, and what exactly is that? The Tamihagani steel. Tamihagani steel is high carbon steel. Ah, I know that. I know high carbon steel. steel. So, were these swords that you found on the field? Yes. Wow, so this really has a significance for you it to find these. It has a significance to me. That wow. It is only issued to the officers. Ah. And the lowest ranking officer that carries the sword was the warrant officer. And how many officers do you think died here? A lot of officers. Oh, wow. Because when they were defeated in Leyte, mm -hmm. they took on all seagoing vessels and landed here and joined the Japanese assigned in this island. Ah. So they were not only 1,300, there were a lot of them. I did not know that, wow. So if they're in war and they're losing their, their dress sword, is it a dress sword or just an everyday issue sword that it they wear? It is were? an everyday sword. It okay. is not just a dress sword that you only wear it during ceremonies. Okay, because <laughs> I had a, a relative during uh, the Civil War that had a dress sword that they bent, yes. that was a captain. Okay, so that's interesting. The soldiers uh, was only Issues with the bayonets. Ah, so only the only the officers carry the sword. Okay, okay. And behind it was the warrant officer. That the handle is made of aluminum. Ah. They just make a mold and pour the molten aluminum mm -hmm. to look at just like the cloth wrapping on oh, the handles wow. Wow. and the uh, aluminum is broken wow. because one of my men we were together who mm -hmm. found it mm -hmm. tried to break it oh no because he thought that the map is Inside it, the map for the treasure. Oh, jeez. <laughs> now that's so special to have carried that up there into the third the... one. That's oh. for the warrant officer, the lowest ranking officer that carries the sword. I mean, somebody took a lot of time to make that, right? And so yes. that was pretty special to whoever had that. Yes, because that is in Ivory, that in 1870, mm -hmm. the samurai 
was banned in Japan. Oh, it was. And the artisans were always making this for the tourist grade mm. to be sold to tourists. Oh, right, right. So each soldier, what were they issued? They were issued a rifle, they were issued a bayonet. And the soldiers were issued with a rifle and a bayonet and the bullets, a helmet, their shoes and their uniform. And maybe some grenades? And some grenades. And did they carry little landmines? Uh, it was not the land. I did not find any landmine here. Oh, well, that's a good thing. Because in Iwo Jima, the Japanese soldiers were using the gas mask and pretend to be dead. They're lying together with the dead. Oh my gosh. They were wearing the gas mask so that they cannot smell the stench oh. of the dead. Oh. And they had the landmines together with them. That when a battle tank comes near them, they attach it. Mm. Because the soldiers, Look the like tank crew, thinks that all of them are dead. All oh, right. Because they lie together with the dead. So did they do any gassing up here? Or was it just all bombs? No, nothing. Okay. But I found a lot of gas masks, Japanese gas masks. So they were ready for it in case. Yes, they were ready for gas warfare, but it was never being used. Ah, thank God. So how, what, what, what time frame were they actually settled here, the Japanese in this area? Were they here in the 40s? Were they here uh, before that? When were they actually the set Japanese up? The Japanese started to arrive here in the Philippines in December 23, 1941. Okay. When 100,000 Japanese troops land here in the Philippines. Mm. And the Americans were unprepared because that is two days before Christmas. Oh, right, right, right. That Pearl Harbor was December 7, Sunday. And the Japanese started to bomb the Philippines Monday, December 8th. Mm. But west of Hawaii is the international dateline. But the new day starts west of Hawaii. Okay. So the Japanese were attacking the Philippines on the same day. Mm. But when you cross that line, that's another day. Okay. <laughs> right, right, yes. right. Makes sense. Jeez, that I have a newspaper that was dated Tuesday, December 9, 1941. New bomb raids on Manila. Mm. So they were, they were, they were ready. They were knowing something yes. was happening. The Japanese started yeah. to bomb on December 8. All the American bases. All oh, right, right. They were destroying the airplanes. Okay. The, a lot of American pilots who were to be assigned here in the Philippines mm -hmm. had no airplanes mm. because Surprise the aircraft carrier carrying the planes was diverted to Australia. Oh, it was? Because it was already, there was already war here and they were afraid that it might be torpedoed by the Japanese. Ah. So they diverted it to Australia. So the pilots huh. does not have any plane. Mm. <laughs> so I gotta ask you this because this is this is kind of my own my own uh, thing that I do for a hobby is I yeah. metal detect for coins. And every time I've metal detected in the park, and it's been probably two years, but people think, oh, they're looking for for Yamashito's treasure. And uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that? There's still stuff here, or do you think stuff that... There is still a lot of stuff here, because near the end, when they were already preparing to surrender, they made a very big hole, 20 feet by 20 feet by 10 feet. And they were putting grease into their katanas 
wrap them with cloth then put the grease again then wrap them with cloth so a lot of officers was here they were just wearing the common soldiers uniform hmm. and they were burying a lot of their swords oh, no wrapping way. them with the cloth because from the store bundles of cloth they just put the grease wrap it when it is already wrapped they put another layer of grease then wrap it again oh, wow. so they put it there so when we find it that is still in very good condition mm. that for one sword because a first-hand account was when they put the swords inside the scabbard mm -hmm. they are sharpening it there is a sharpening stone oh eh? no kidding and when they remove it it is had the sound of just ah. like it's always sharpening i didn't know that and they had gold handles everything that is for the generals mm. the admirals that went with that hmm. a lot. so tell me what you got back here it looks like quite an assortment of stuff this is the arm position of the knee mortar okay and that means the one i inverted is the first rockets ah that this had been fired you can see the rifling on it oh right right the lines they right. fire at the center and the propellant blows this out mm. and there are holes at the side that blows the copper band to make it very tight into the barrel interesting huh. i can show you one with the holes the copper band was already taken out oh yeah this is in the safe mode with the safety cap okay this is in the arm position ah when this is launched by the launcher it can travel 120 meters to 670 meters away so how do they dial it? they just the height of however they aim it a lot of americans were harmed by this oh no kidding because it was wrongly named as the knee mortar because the base looks like it will hug the knee, ah. the base, mm -hmm. and it is only that long. Hmm. When they load it, they have the triggering mechanism. When they fire, it flies. Ah. But it was wrongly named as the knee mortar because you do not have to put it onto your knees. Mm. You have to put it on top of a root or a rock. Oh. Step on it before you launch because it has a very sharp recoil, always breaking that knee oh. in that action. Oh, it's so strong. Very sharp recoil. Oh my gosh. So a lot of Americans were harmed by the launchers. Of Interesting. Course. Wow. Imagine 670 meters away, the recoil. Oh, yeah. And yeah. this is not. Even the M1 Garand, the mm. recoil always mm. Mm. every time you fire. And that's huge. That's, and yeah. this is very mm. big. This is 50 mm. Oh boy. That's serious business there. And the M1 Garand was just only 7.62 mm. Yeah, that's a huge difference. And that this would, is 50 mm. That would take your leg right off. Just about, huh? The Japanese. 50 caliber machine gun, 13.25 uh -huh. inch. Mm. Of the hundreds of bullets I found, only four of this type. Four of this type. Uh -huh. This is not the only one that is not, four of them was the only one that is not double action. Huh. This is anti-aircraft, and oh. this is also. So they were set up to shoot airplanes. Anti-aircraft, that when this is fired towards you, when it hits you, it explodes because it is filled up with explosives. Ah, uh, Nothing inside. Mm. Interesting, very deadly. 
So there are only... Were they all copper jacket or were some different? What? Were they all only copper jacket bullets? Is that all they used during World War II? This is brass. Or brass, okay. So that is the three kinds of bullets. Okay. The two are anti-aircraft and the one is just a ball. Ah, okay. Interesting. That's real interesting. I only found four of this. Mm. I remember you telling me that. Right, yes. right. Yes. Hmm. That we have a very intense fighting down here. Mm. The, the 50 oh. was hit with a 30 caliber slug. Oh my gosh. That's it amazing. That's really something. Yes. So but this was not the slug that hit it. This is not the shot right, that right, hit right. it. I cannot find the mm. one that hit it. Mm. That's pretty amazing. So yeah. that was set up on a gun somewhere and somebody yes. was shooting at it. It ah. was in the link when it was hit. Because if it is not in the link, when you hit it, it is pushed mm. away. Mm. So it cannot go through. So do you think that was shot at from an aircraft? It was... The, the Japanese were using them because they were already very disadvantaged. They were taking them from the airplanes okay. and using them to shoot the... But do you think the bullet that hit that came from the sky or do you think no, it came from... No, from the ground. Oh, it was from the ground. Okay. So that's a pretty darn good shot to get that. Wow. Amazing. Launcher, what is that? What? This is the 81 millimeter mortar. Ah. And the small rockets beside it are the rounds. Oh my gosh. And this is here. That fits those, those rounds. Okay. I got it. This is what I told you about. All right. Amazing. That is at 12 o'clock. That is instantaneous explosion. Hmm. At three o'clock, that is delayed explosion. Oh wow! They can and they it. just do it like this. Oh boy! They adjust for the range. Okay. Then you always hear this in the movie. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Fire down the hole. Right. Ah, and then it shoots it out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at that. You've had a little practice, I'm sure. <laughs> Fire down the hole. Fire in the hole, baby. Huh. But that was serious business when that thing was coming out of the yes. deal. In Iwo Jima, this was effectively used by the Japanese because they were there all the time that they were making grease of the whole island. Mm. And if you are not moving on your that, on that square, mm -hmm. on what that distance, mm -hmm. If you are not moving, you're already dead Oof. because they are targeting you. They know what square you are. Oh boy. If you do not transfer to another square, you're already dead. So you got to constantly be moving. That mm. The number of American casualties in Iwo Jima amounted to 27,000 United States Marines. Wow. And only 21,000 Japanese mm. lost their lives in Iwo Jima. Mm. Wow. Because Tadamichi Kuribayashi, the commander, Lieutenant General Tadamichi Kuribayashi, told all of his soldiers, you are not permitted to die if you cannot kill 10 American soldiers. Oh my gosh. So that reminds me, now when they were in Valencia yes. and they were fighting, they ran down to uh, Zamboanga Nita? Zamboangita. Zamboangita. And now, the gal up at the, 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 sh the shrine told me that if they hadn't taken off, they would have been killed if they hadn't surrendered. Now, that seems kind of interesting that they, they would actually surrender instead of taking their own lives. Yes. <laughs> because I have interviewed a man who lives in Mantoyop, in Shiaton. Mm -hmm. He was 
captured by the Japanese and for every 12 Japanese soldiers, they needed two prisoners of war to gather the water and the firewood. Oh boy. And the Japanese were entrenching themselves, making trenches, foxholes. They're not allowed to help them. But when the bombing starts to mm -hmm. fall onto their area, mm -hmm. they are not allowed to hide into the trenches. Oh, you're kidding. So they just hide into the big roots of the trees when the branches are falling down from the explosions mm. because the Japanese wanted that the Americans are the ones killing them. Oh boy. Jeez. <laughs> Drinking water bottle for the Japanese. You're kidding. Japanese patients who need very clean water. Really? The soldiers just drink from the streams and the wells. Ah. When the patient brings this, they break one end. Put it into their mouth, then break the other end to release the vacuum. Because oh. in the Second World War, there was still no plastics mm -hmm. that the Japanese were using the glass. That's amazing. The rest of it is right there. So those are bottles that you found here on site? Yes, and there are still oh three gosh. of them that still has the contents. Wow. So and they're un underneath it. So I didn't think that they had time to really set this up that well. It was brought by the medical corps only for patients okay. who need very clean water. So was this by like a, where a medic would have been stationed? From the medical corps that I found them per box or 10 bottles per box. Okay. Oh. Yeah, the box is made of low on it, not plywood. Ah. That's but really something. It was already disintegrated. I just removed them. And as I was carrying it home, some were broken. Mm. The tips. But what's interesting is this is all these things are just from one one site. One bottle of ground. And there had to be hundreds of these in the Philippines. A lot of this. Right? So there has to be areas where there's stuff that but nobody's the Americans were bombing the hill from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. Oh, wow. And they take pot shots at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 4 o'clock. So the Japanese cannot sleep. They will be over fatigued. Oh, wow. So were they shooting mostly from the ocean or were they coming from, from the sky? Here. Oh, they were using the 155 mm howitzer and the 105. And how many miles could that travel? How many kilometers? That is 16 kilometers. Wow, that's really cooking. Because the Japanese were afraid that the American Navy will bomb the city. Mm. But the Americans did not do it. They landed 12 kilometers to the north in Luok, Sibulan. Okay. Because if they bomb the city, a lot of civilians will die together with the Japanese. And the nice. Japanese retreated to the hills to be out of range from the naval guns. Mm, that makes sense. Because in military training, we are always told to occupy high ground. Mm. The Japanese really did it. And that area was that key. Area. I looked at that area ground. and that was an amazing defensive position. Yes. Steep slopes. Narrow ridge up at the front, that was pretty amazing. Yeah. That took some thinking to get that spot. Because they were already very disadvantaged that if you're on top of a hill, you can throw your grenades further down. Mm. When you're down there, mm. when you throw your grenade up, it will return to you to kill you. <laughs> right. Because... <laughs> Gravity. The force of throwing it on top of the hill mm. You need the launcher. All right. The grenade launchers to do it. Right. You do not do it by hand. So I'm surprised to learn that they were really set up by yes. the time that the by the time the American forces bombed them, they were really set up. Yes. They've been there a while. A lot of them. Look at the Japanese teeth. 
mm. one gold. I only left one gold here mm. because I have four sisters. I am I am the only son of my mother. That mm. my mother does not want me to join anything with a gun. Mm. Because the only brother of my mother died as a prisoner of war. Oh. And he does not want me to be just like his brother. Mm. And on the corner, that was the commendation from the President of the United States to my uncle. No kidding. It reads, in grateful memory of Private Nemesio P. Bilia, mm. who died in the service of his country in the Pacific on 18 July 1942. Mm. He stands in the unbroken line of patriots who have dared to die that freedom might live and grow and increase its blessings. So, if there's something that you want the young people to learn from this, uh, what, what is important to you that, that they take away from seeing your, your collection, seeing your museum? What, what do you want them to take home from this? I am just preserving our history here and we won that war. And a lot of people does not know about the Second World War. Mm. So I want them to know that war is very costly. Because in the war in Marawi, they only had that big bombs dropped by the airplanes. Mm. And do you know the cost per bomb? It is 25,000 US dollars. Oh my gosh. And that is very costly. Right. right. Not you can feed a lot of people mm. with one bomb. Mm. And the lives lost, right? Yes. A lot of families destroyed. They were destroying everything. That when the Air Force tried to load the 1,000 pound bombs, the human rights advocates were the ones stopping them mm. because that is already inhuman. Mm. Imagine three kilometers that way, three kilometers that way, and three kilometers that way. If those bombs were the bombs, Drop over in Marawi, it the war will only end in one day. Oh my gosh! Killing everybody, mm. even the cockroaches are mm. dead. Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's pretty rare to kill a cockroach, right? Uh. All right, Felix. So thanks, thanks for coming and uh, uh, joining me on my my video <coughs> of exploring your, your wonderful museum. Um, and if anybody wants to find your museum, how should they contact you? Do you have a website? Do you have a, a number they can I... call you? You can just do the Google, and the Google will bring you here. Okay, so I'll give you a map. And yes, you're... and to find it easily, I am just next to the Total Gasoline Station, and I am at the center of Total Gasoline Station and the Petron Gasol. So, if it you're is very hard easy to find the first crossing in Valencia mm. as you're heading up the main highway from yes. Dumaguete up to Valencia he is yeah. right on the right hand side before you get to the right hill hand side. great well I appreciate you showing me your museum and, and what it comes down for me is you are the real treasure of this museum yes. because everything you know everything that's in your heart that because is valuable an assessor coming from Bacolod in 1985 was telling me you do not have to look for the treasure. This is the treasure itself. Mm, right, right. And I appreciate that. Thank you, Felix. Thank you for showing me this. Thank you. Hey, 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 Vern.